Welcome to Science Headliners. Our discussion today is with Chris Umi. Please welcome our host from Linda Hall Library, Vice President for Public Programs, Eric Ward. A few weeks ago, a series of Tom Cruise videos went viral on TikTok with millions of views. The videos show crews doing things such as swinging a golf club and doing a magic trick. But there's a catch. The person in the videos is not the famous Hollywood actor. These highly believable deep fake videos were the creation of Chris Ume, a visual effects specialist from Belgium. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Hello, Eric. Thanks for having me. Did you have any idea when you posted the videos uh, what the reaction would be across the world? Uh, not at all. Um, we're just having fun. We were just creating some fun videos. We never expected to go as far well as, as, it, as it is, right? Like that's always a thing. You, you create videos and you just, you just hope people like them and people watch them. And then uh, uh, suddenly like millions of people are commenting and sharing it. It's, it's, it's crazy. You said that you created the videos to entertain and to raise awareness. What do you mean by raise awareness? Well, uh, in all my videos, I just try to, to, to teach people uh, for what's coming and what's going to be possible in the, in the next coming years. Because uh, fake videos uh, in general, it, it's going to be possible in a few years. People at home will be able to make such things. Maybe not at the level that I was doing it now, but just so people get used to it, like fake videos or even videos where, pe uh, where people are just in speech. So, so people sh shouldn't believe everything they see. Uh, I think that's what I mean when raising awareness. Each video is, uh, I believe, you know, 25, 30 seconds. What, what was the work that went into to each video? Um, well, I, I trained this uh, AI model of Tom Cruise for two months. And this model is like all his expression, all his angles. It's all in the model. And he's been training for two months. And after that, I trained the model for two or three days per video. So it got used to the when he was eating a lollipop, when he was doing uh, the golfing. It, that, that took two or three days. And then uh, on average, I spent like uh, 15 to 24 hours per video doing post-production, fixing glitches, fixing issues, making sure like details are sh just right. So it's, it, it took a long time to create these videos. So it's not something that your average person with a little bit of tech skills could do? No, it's not easy. You have these apps on the phone where you can just take one image and, and upload it and, and then you get you got your face in a scene. But the quality and the way that the expression, it's not even close. So you, you have to have a lot of expertise. You have to have the hardware. And don't forget, you also have to have the actor to do it. So it's a lot of work. And the actor is a very important component. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been working with Miles Fisher on these videos. He's one of the world's best Tom Cruise impersonators. Like the way he laughs, the way he's moving. It's all, it's, it's, it's all just so on point. And he looks similar as well. So I didn't have to deep fake his hair. I just kept Miles' original hair. And it's so similar to Tom Cruise. Well, the videos are amazing. I, I could not tell that it wasn't Tom Cruise. But they're also scary. What's the? Yeah. What do you see as the future of these deep fake technologies? Well, I see. It, I see it as a, in a creative way. I see a lot of creative possibilities. Uh, the movie industry is is totally going to change by uh, the way AI is going to be used in general, but deep fake as well. And uh, for deep fake, uh, specifically in the future, I think. I think we'll have to find ways how to um, how to cope with it, if that's the right word. Like people um, have to question themselves. Everything they see, they have to, to confirm uh, or they have to go and, 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 and find where they found this video. Is, it, is this, are the sources reliable? Because people will be able to fake videos and, and it's difficult to, uh, to know what you have to believe and what not. So, um, it's difficult to predict, but we'll have to find ways how to handle these things. In reaction to your videos, NBC News wrote that 
While deepfake videos have not yet been effectively used in many misinformation campaigns, the danger is growing. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that the danger is growing? And uh, if so, is there a need to regulate what you're doing? The danger is growing, um, but, but I, I see possibilities as well, because I believe journalists in general have to confirm where they find these videos before they start sharing stuff because they have a, an important role there when, when they publish something millions of people are watching it and they they, they believe what what was being shared um, so I think it's really important that we will find will uh, that we find a way how um, how to track where these videos are coming from to make sure they're real or not um, and what was your second question? I forgot it. <laughs> About regulation. Do you, do you think oh. uh, th there's a need to, re to regulate these technologies or, uh, or not? Yeah, I think, I think uh, I'm, first of all, I'm not a lawyer or a jurist. For me, it's right. really difficult to say what we have to do, but we have to find a way to regulate these things because I don't, I don't support like, uh, the way this technology is being misused in certain cases, and I'm uh, and I'm not, I can't believe why uh, I don't understand why you're, we're still not regulating these kind of things like deepfake pornography. Why is it still public available on the internet? Why why is it still there? So I think we have to um, find ways to regulate this. Is there a way, is there software, is there an, or any other way to detect these deep fake videos? Well, I think I have, I have something really important to tell, uh, to talk about, uh, to say about this, because you have these uh, deep fake detectors online and they're really good. It's good we're working on these things. The problem is they're also giving false positives. I got a lot of requests of, of people in my mailbox that are asking, uh, asking me stuff like, is this video fake? Is this video fake? And I analyze it and I say, no, it's real. It's, it's now fake. And then they tell me like, yeah, but I uploaded to this website and it said like it's 98% fake. So it's, it's giving false positives as well. So it's difficult. Um, so we have to find ways how to detect these things. But... When we tell people something's fake or we have some detection tools that are saying certain things are fake, then we have to make sure that we're not, that we're not confusing people as well. It's going to be interesting to see how the technology advances in, in the coming years. This, is all, deep, this deep fake technology has only been around for just a handful of years, correct? Yeah, I think it started uh, in the end of 2017, if I'm correct. I started doing it, uh, working with the tech uh, by the end of 2018. So that's uh, not that much, a few years. It's evolving quickly. What, Chris, what's next for you? I, I, I see behind you uh, a poster for uh, Sassy Justice, a, a web series yeah. that you're a part of. That You're a team of deep fake artists at a, a studio called Deep Voodoo uh, yeah. that was created by Trey Parker and Matt Stone, creators of South Park. Uh, you're working on that. What's, uh, what's next that you're able to talk about? Well, we're working on new stuff at the studio and we're always re researching uh, how to get better at certain techniques. Um, so I'm not sure what I can say about what we're going to release, but in my free time, I'm still working on new stuff for the Deep Tom Cruise channel, just to amaze people, not to fool them. I just want to tickle their fantasy. <laughs> and, um, and I'm also working on different projects and, 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 and I'm sure I can share them on my socials soon. Um, but, I'm not sitting still, and at Deep Food, we're not sitting still either. Like Fred Sassy is still working on something new as well. He's coming back. That's what I can what I can promise. What's the uh, Tom Cruise TikTok uh, channel? Is it at Deep Tom? Deep Tom Cruise. Okay. Uh, I'm sure if you if you type Tom Cruise TikTok, I'm sure you'll find it. All right. Um, <laughs> All right, let's end with uh, my big three questions. Uh, just give me the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah. Have you heard from Tom Cruise or his representatives? Um, 
Yes, we call them, we ask them, did you receive our email? Uh, we send them an email like, if you don't like the videos we're making, we'll take them down. And they said, yes, we received your email. And that's it. That's Never it. heard of so, them again. So, it, so he didn't ask you to take them down? No, he didn't respond. I guess he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Any publicity is good publicity, I guess, for him. Yeah. Um, e yeah. Even if it's not really him. How far away are we from someone with just average technical skills being able to put together a fairly believable deep fake video five years ten years or no it will always require someone with extensive expertise and experience um it's difficult it depends on how, how rapidly the tech will evolve by, i guess between five and ten years because you have to realize photoshop has been around for 20 years maybe longer and still Today, still today, if you if you ask someone to create a realistic fake photo photo that you're going to believe, you still need an expert or someone who's really good, and and that's just one. Still, we're not talking about video, so I think we're still a few years uh, away from someone to create a realistic video like the Tom Cruise things. I think the voice would be very difficult to capture. It, you know, it's one thing to get the image, but. Boy, that that voice, you, ha you really have to nail yeah. the voice. Yeah. Um, uh, there are certain AI tools to work on, on voice synthesizing, but um, it's not it's not great yet. Like you can still hear it's 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 artificial. It's it, it's evolving rapidly as well, but it's still a way behind the visual part. So um, I think to create a realistic uh, synthesized voice. We're even like four, five, six years away from that. All right, we'll end with this one. What's your favorite Tom Cruise movie? Oh, uh, just Miss Mission Impossible. All right. <laughs> it's, it's easy. <laughs> I, I like oh. Top Gun, so uh, but, uh, I, I love Mission uh, Impossible as well. So. Uh, I'm more a fan of like Lord of the Rings fantasy. Tom Cruise more like action action hero. All right. <laughs> I'm more like that type of guy. <laughs> All right. Well, Chris, thank you again for uh, taking the time to join me today. It's been a pleasure to talk with you, and I look forward to uh, seeing what you come up with next. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Science Headliners has been made possible by the generous donations you make to the Linda Hall Library.